social media world we move, we are moving towards or we live in has actually glorified that social media marketing is some kind of a way or marketing is some kind of way to make money faster you know without putting in those efforts that are required to make money the idea behind it is to have that understanding that marketing is not just the glorified thing that you see today the fundamental of marketing is So yeah so i would just like to you know start with your journey i i am in love with storytelling i love hearing stories i love telling stories so mm-hmm. i always like to start the episode in you know uh, where the person is coming from what's basically their story so why not you tell everyone who prama is where is she coming from and why she chose marketing why marketing <laughs> <laughs> so uh, okay so how did this happen mm-hmm. uh, you know the funny thing when i was a kid uh my favorite thing was looking at ads you know seeing watching all the ads on tv and i used to it was my personal responsibility to decrypt those ads like why is this <laughs> happening why are they saying this mama papa they want us to buy this because this is on offer so i think mm-hmm. when i was a kid it all started from then okay i had that marketing ka kida when That's i was crazy. like 6 5 6 six years old Yeah. and my mom always used to say you know she will do something in the in advertising or marketing, marketing. i'm sure okay but literally not my mom nobody really had a clue of what marketing and advertising was all about back yeah. then i'm talking mm-hmm. about the 80s mm-hmm. so that being said we usually follow a path of you know the set basics that everybody does right mm-hmm. you become mm-hmm. uh, an engineer you become a doctor you become a teacher a lecturer you know this the safe paths that people tend to take yeah. uh, my journey pretty much followed the same path uh, when i was studying uh, the thing to do uh, were mostly you know mba basically do an mba yeah. Yeah. right uh, yeah. i did my mba i did it in finance because growing up okay i loved i was always torn i loved words and i mm-hmm. loved numbers Okay. Yeah, okay. But where do you go? It's not an easy uh you know solution. Yeah. But then I saw yes, there's a lot of money happening in finance. <laughs> so let's do an MBA in finance. Good yeah. money consulting and stuff. Yeah. Did it. Uh landed a job at Deloitte. Enjoyed mm-hmm. the year that I worked there, but slowly I realized you know whatever that happens that you know I'm not feeling happy. I am not feeling yeah. content. Mm-hmm. I need to do something else. Funny thing, you know, the word content. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. So uh, now, what happened was, uh, you know, I, I tried dabbling into a lot of different things. Uh, blogging was one of, you know, these things, and um, it it's just it just happened. You know, uh, somebody picked up a blog that I wrote some day, and they said, "Hey, you have a skill for storytelling, for writing. Why don't you work with us?" Yeah. And I started my stint with uh, PR. I worked with quite a few, you know, really good brands, and got a good exposure from the agency where I worked. Great people, great experience. And then, uh, Akshat, what do I tell you? Marketing just <laughs> happened. I, that happened. is the thing. So it just it's, happened. <laughs> yeah. So now it's it's almost like now you can exactly connect the dots when you look backwards. Now you know. how it exactly happened and it, it just it, happened yeah. for a reason yeah 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 that's crazy that's crazy to know and like so like it hap- like it didn't happen like so naturally like it happened to you because you're like okay i was when i was a kid uh, i always used to look at you know advertising hoardings and all those kind of things so it didn't came so early to me uh because like when i was a kid i was like okay i don't know what i really want to do everybody is like do an en- do an engineering so i went to an engineering college to computer science because everybody is like it's trending you got to do computer science second mm-hmm. year i realized no this is not my thing this is not my cup of tea cannot do it for rest of my life So I started learning psychology, consumer behavior, reading books around it. You know, that's my thing. Uh, started getting into the world of social media, obviously content. Uh, kind of, you know, got inspired by a lot of beautiful creators, and I was like, this is my thing. This is something that I would love doing. So I eventually, so that was my entry way. That 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 was my path in into the world of marketing, mm-hmm. and I've been enjoying it every bit of it since then. You know, I chose to kind of go into the this, that path of marketing and all those kind of things. So. But my, you had a really big career, like eleven years of eleven year worth of career, which is a very very big career. Like, uh, if you ask me, 
I cannot even imagine all the things and all the experience that you have been through because I am just a 23 year old, you know, graduated in March 2020. Uh, so what what do you would you say have been you know those few magical moments or I would say pivoting moments in your career that you think really changed the way you perceive life and professional life per se. So tell me more about, you know, what were those moments where you're like, okay, now I have figured out actually what I'm in love with, you know, because there are always some moments like there, there, there is not it obviously there is a chain of things and experiences that you go through that shape you as a person but there are always those some magical moments in someone's life so i'd be interested in knowing that oh okay <laughs> <laughs> quite a take loaded your question take your time take um, your time yeah yeah um the thing with uh, my journey has been um I've had a lot of changes happening always and it's it's not that it was thrust upon me I kind of live on that you know the rush of those changes I don't like a lot of stability all the time when it comes to stability as in stagnation I wouldn't say stability so uh, you know kind of foring into different horizons figuring out what's next is always there so if I've learned something I keep practicing that but my mind is always what's next like right mm. now, if I, you know, I'm doing what I'm doing, but my mind is in metaverse marketing. <laughs> so it's, it's already, you know, That's sitting good. right there and trying yeah. to figure out what can be done mm-hmm. there. So, yeah. uh, you know, when I started off, like I mentioned, you know, I was working with an agency. I was content writing, copywriting, ghost writing articles. Uh, and uh, a lot of that actually went into, um, you know, economic times, financial times meant all of those. So, uh, I slowly uh, discovered, you know, one of the biggest things uh, that you have to uh, take care of as a budding professional, especially if you're a freelancer or trying to run an agency is an imposter syndrome, Mm. because you will always keep asking yourself, is this happening to me? Is it a fluke or am Mm. I responsible for making this happen? Right. So when you start getting these opportunities and you start cracking them, It helped me realize that, fine, I think right now I'm on the right path. It's not only about if I love it. It's also about if I am actually doing justice to this path. Hmm. And while I started doing that, uh, the pivoting point would be my clients. I have had some amazing clients that I've worked with. And these people, uh, they said, hey, so I have to brainstorm. One thing initially when I was growing in my career, my initial years, Mm -hmm. uh, I always mentioned that, you know, look for skill building first and then everything else will follow. So I used to brainstorm with my clients like, hey, you can do this next, that next. And strategy was not part of the package of, you know, my services. But you liked it anyway. I liked it and I did it. And he said, hey, you have a great mind for it. Why don't you handle marketing for this entire thing you know mm. brand i did it so that <laughs> that was a pivot right from mm. a content uh, writer or you know just strategy i started executing those Think step by step yeah the learning was insane insane word of mouth more clients in and during that time i learned graphic designing i learned storytelling i run uh, learned inbound email content marketing <laughs> all of it just that's to great. ensure i live up to his standards and his expectations yeah that's so insane I would that's, say, yeah yeah, yeah so, that's pretty much it yeah, like i i i had a uh, i i always had a, a you know a pretty great experiences with my clients as well because so when i was starting out i was like okay i am a just a kid graduate out of the college I have few skills that I can offer in the offer to the world, but I never said no to, you know, any opportunity coming my way. Mm. So if somebody was like, okay, uh, you know, graphic designing, but we are also looking for someone who can do some basic animation for us. So I was like, okay, I don't know it. So there has, there had have been moment in my life where I was like, okay, I don't know animation, but I told yes to the client that, okay, I will be able to do it. I set two nighters straight learned animation and was able to deliver that basic animation to the client. And that has been a completely life-changing yeah. moment moments for me, those small, small moments where you, you know, kind of overcommitted and then you actually figured out a way to actually deliver that work. So I think that's yes. always a great, I, 
obviously you have to be in your limits you cannot say yes to everything which is just yeah. cannot be possible but uh, that has been a thing for me as well so you mentioned that you know like you are always curious about what next you would be uh, what next what's the next thing you would be interested in or what's the next thing that you would uh, like to execute uh, in your professional career or whatever you're trying to do so like i myself i i i am always you know like when whenever i'm sitting doing something there are different thoughts in my mind okay i can do that as well i can do that as that as well i am creating consume uh, i'm uh, consuming content from other creators and they are doing something else as like oh, i can do that as well so my question is see there are a lot of things happening you know like nfts crypto normal you know trading has been the boom everybody is talking about finances investment then there is marketing and even in marketing there are like tens and twenties and hundreds of components yes. of marketing right so uh, my question is how do you focus on that one thing that you are working upon at the moment and when it, obviously like you cannot control thoughts thoughts are inevitably going to come in your mind penetrate your mind from all the different directions but i think it has been really hard for me in the recent times to actually pay very close focus concentrated attention on one thing that i am performing and to not pivot to all the different things that might work but i'm i have been just all over the place you know and it took me a lot of time and effort to actually bring my attention to few things that i want to perform so how do you go about it and how you how do you take care of it Okay. Akshat, you remember you asked me how my day has been today, and I get quite <laughs> forgot. <laughs> yeah. So uh, that's the thing. As a marketer, you can't really, uh, you know, just focus on one segment. I think mm-hmm. one of the biggest learning that I've had as a marketer is that uh, you have to build that fortitude. You know, the strength to. manage a couple of different fronts that have been opened with every client so mm. for each client for example if if i talk about uh, say uh, say edvolve is not a client really it's it's my work you know i had my marketing for edvolve yeah. so uh, say i have to take care of community building for them but for that community building i have to ensure content creation i yep. have to ensure email marketing uh, to yeah. nurture you know the members so i can't really focus on one thing the moment i'm writing that email i'm thinking is that sop out for it like how will they what is the yeah. user journey in it got it so i would say rather than focus focus yeah. is important but there are certain uh, things that we have to admit that we can't do it and mm-hmm. we can't really stick to one thing when we are in marketing and if you are handling three fronts we are going to juggle in between and that to. is the skill we are going to build hmm. that we are going to juggle without losing it yeah 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 no that's a great point that's a great like so uh, i think it in, it in a way so you 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 have uh, i have kind of gone through your twitter profile and you say that i am not a specific type of marketer like i am not an email marketer i am not a social media marketer i am a marketer generalist which is a great because i think about myself in the same way because as a marketer you just cannot be like okay i just create content like if you you know like if you just create content you are not a marketer you are more of a designer you are more of a i would say content, content creator. creator yeah you cannot mm-hmm. say you are a marketer right so uh Uh, obviously like you know always there are a lot of components to it email marketing advertising how to actually uh, uh, come up with the strategy of the content that you are doing what all platforms to choose and all the million things so when you say you are a journalist marketer in 11 year of you, your journey uh, uh, you have, you might have worked at a lot of places with a lot of people uh, i am interested in what are those few things that you absolutely enjoy when it comes to marketing like what are those aspects of marketing that come very naturally to you to you and you like to get involved in those components more and more if given a choice that's a great question <laughs> and actually i have a clear answer for that <laughs> that's great that's great maybe yeah. that's the reason why you found questions so uh, beautiful or intriguing yeah <laughs> it is um, you know it is content marketing that's okay. uh, that's what i love most about marketing mm-hmm. uh the reason being um uh, i am very much into human behavior and uh, you know psychology like you know i always Same. say at the end yeah. of the day i am mm-hmm. not against data you know my instagram bio says that i'm a number loving storytelling marketer yeah right i love data i love numbers but mm-hmm. marketing is about creating connections it connections. is about building Absolutely. you know long term relationships 
That's you can't true. just focus on numbers, That's money, point, leads, you know, you can't shrink them down to that. It's an emotion you generate over a really long period of time. It's a trust you build with people. And Absolutely. that happens. Content marketing is that one place that really makes it happen beautifully by, you know, helping people trust you over time with your yeah. communication. That's so, yeah, point. that is one part. Yeah. So yeah. content marketing it is then. Yeah. So <laughs> like it is almost laughable to me, you know, uh, so people come to me, uh, a lot of people reach out to me and they're like, Akshat, how do I get in the world of social media marketing? Uh, how do I start freelancing in the world of social media marketing? You know, because every, everybody inevitably wants to do it in the world we are moving towards. So uh, I, I, I always ask them, are you in love with marketing? Like, do you actually enjoy understanding how people behave? You know, so for all the folks uh, who are in college, who are who have just graduated out of the college, please share 11, from, something from 11 years of wisdom, why it is actually necessary to actually, you know, understand what marketing is at its core. Because what I believe is the... Uh, social media world we move, we are moving towards or we live in has actually glorified that social media marketing is some kind of a way or marketing is some kind of a ma way to make money faster, you know, without mm -hmm. putting in those efforts that are required to make money, you know. And so people completely ignore the traditional concepts of marketing and you coming from uh, uh, you having a history of a marketing working at all over the place with a lot of different clients, you I, I feel like Tell me if I'm wrong that you are kind of a traditional marketer where you understand exactly, you know, creating user personas, actually understanding a human and your target market and then reaching out to them with whatever strategies that you create, you know. So uh, give us some, tell us something about what is the importance of actually understanding the traditional and core concepts of marketing before you dive deep into those glorified uh, concepts of marketing that we see all around the internet uh, in the present. Okay. Yes, absolutely, Akshay. So, so you are aware of the community I'm, I'm trying to absolutely. build, right? The Digivich yep. Marketing Community. Yeah, yeah, yeah. The idea behind it is to have that understanding that marketing is not just the glorified thing that you see today. Yeah. It is way more at the core of it. The fundamental absolutely. of marketing is human. And I'm not the only person who is talking about it. There are like tons of people who are doing, yeah. but the tons fall short when it comes mm -hmm. to the number of marketers all over the world. So yeah. the number of people who are having this conversation are way too little. And we want yeah. more people to understand this. Absolutely. So what happens is, like you mentioned, yes, I'm, I'm a traditional marketer. I would happily say that. The reason being, uh, you know, a, a lot of people say that at the end of the day, it is not B2B, it's not B2C, it is H2H or yeah. B2B, which mm -hmm. is basically human to human or person to person marketing, right? So I am a B2B marketer. My point of view when it comes to B2B is that at the end of the day, you're selling to a person, right? Mm, the yeah. person who is going to make that decision of buying your software or, you know, the tool that you're selling is either, you know, a CFO, a CTO, uh, the CEO, the gatekeeper of the company, it could be any, any one person. Yeah. It's not a business without any human emotions or feelings. Absolutely. And when you create a persona for that person, you are not just looking at what kind of problems they are facing in business. You dig deep into why do we look at the demographics? Mm -hmm. Why do we look at, you know, where they live, the amount of time they spend on commuting? Because we are trying to find out how we can make their life easier yeah. with a CRM tool, yeah. with, a, you know, with a software. Even yeah. one software can help them save time, earn more money. And mm -hmm. with the save time, they spend more time with their family, for example. Yeah. We need to reach people with those communication, help them understand. Exactly. It's not for the sake of just selling the product. Yeah. I think, now, I think, yeah. Yeah. yeah, so you yeah. sorry, sorry for interrupting. You're saying <laughs> no. you're saying uh, now what I'm saying is, you know, when we talk about the uh, the way people look at marketing th these days that we have tools, we have dashboards, we have a ton of numbers with us, we know whom to reach out to. All that is fine. We need that. We need to know whom we are reaching out to. But this traditional marketing comes to the place of how with what messaging we are reaching out to them. 
so that it makes an impact and actually makes it happen that they choose us yeah so Makes that's sense. what yeah yeah mm-hmm. yeah no, that's a that's a great point you know like so i think when people you know sub, like obviously there are a lot of difference differences when it comes to you know b2c marketing or b2b marketing obviously there are because you have to think in a slightly different way uh, but i think at the end of the day if you understand the person you're talking to that mm-hmm. touch point uh, that you have whether it be an organization or whether it be just a single person who is buy- buying your product because see i think that for example you you say you are a b2b marketer right but when you are creating content trying to build your own personal brand at the end of the day you are a b2c marketer as well because you are trying to uh, attract people to your content or to your community right but since you understand that re- building relationships and actually building those connections with people is going to do the job for you it doesn't matter if you are into b2b or b2c right exactly. so i think mm-hmm. that's a great point like uh, you just cannot uh, and i always say it to people that you know like if you are a, a content creator if you know how to run facebook ads that's great and it is not a rocket science everybody can go online and learn it it's not a rocket mm-hmm. science what will make you different is how you talk to people you know how you will build connections with them how will you make them feel because at the end of the day as human beings we just want to feel good you know we want people who who will uh, solve our problems who will talk in a humble way to us nobody likes a jerk right so i think <laughs> I, i have always been uh, of that notion that my unique selling point has to be the experience that i offer to my clients you know the way i talk to them because everybody can run facebook ads it is not rocket science you know there might be a person who might be slightly better than another one or, or slightly better than what we are doing but if they don't know how to talk to them anyways they are not going to work with them yeah because yeah. relationships is the catalyst to the uh, you know business collaboration that we do in the world so i think uh, that's again a great point so I think we have uh, I think we have done a very hefty questions in this segment so th- uh, I I would just like to know more about like where you are from where you where do you live where you're operating from right now like how are things going Where I'm from I'm from a lot of places altogether <laughs> <laughs> Okay I I I I just keep switching addresses a lot okay. uh, so I I say you know I'm basically from Kolkata I'm from a bit of bangalore a bit of hyderabad a bit of uh, delhi and cr so okay. yeah that's pretty and, much it and all over the place thanks to www <laughs> and right now you're <laughs> operating from delhi and cr delhi yeah. i'm sure it's freezing i'm sure it's cold or not yeah it is it is <laughs> it cold is. <laughs> yeah. it's i'm i'm literally freezing from last 3 days in my hometown it's in rajasthan chitorgarh and i'm mm-hmm. freezing like it's extremely cold and it's almost impossible to be you know at 100% productivity and i'm pissed about it <laughs> but yeah i know <laughs> <laughs> but yeah same yeah yeah it is what it is right so yeah 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 and what like how are scenes in delhi when it comes to pollution because i haven't talked to a person from delhi in a long time like how how, how is the situation yeah it there? is it is bad it, it is, is bad. you know the smog and all of it sometimes we have to like whip up that uh, whip out that uh, what do you call that air purifier and stuff oh, just to ensure that you know damn. uh the pollution levels are pretty high but yeah now it's That's it's insane. it's fine it is what is yeah, okay, it, it is, is and it is yeah we have to survive right yeah we yeah. have omicron now so anyways nobody's stepping anyways, out so yeah. yeah yeah that's good that's good that's good so you are doing a lot of things right you are a chief marketing officer of adwall if i'm not spelling it wrong you mm-hmm. are building a community called dejivich you are creating content on twitter you have started building something new with i guess um, praveen and those guys i'm not sure yeah, yeah. yeah what's that hiring uh, uh, i i cannot uh, hiring is on hiring, hiring is on hiring <laughs> is on okay so multiple things going on again you might be working with clients if you are I, i'm not sure yeah so, yeah so dejivich yeah yeah so Uh, see in in anyone who is doing something of their own uh at the the biggest obstacle in progress i think is to actually build building a schedule you know because yeah. since you are doing things on your own you nobody is controlling you and sometimes you might get very lazy you might be like okay mm-hmm. i'm not going to do it today let's go out with friends and let's do it tomorrow right so uh t- tell me how, how what are the thoughts in your mind and how do you approach actually being very disciplined because i think discipline is the way to uh success in anything that you're doing right so what is your sched- schedule like and how do you manage everything that you do and so many things at the same time 
Yeah, okay. So uh, I have a very, uh, you know, different approach of managing things. I would not advise it to everyone, but I'm going to okay. share it nonetheless. Okay. Okay. Uh, so I'm, apart from doing all these things, I'm a mom to a five-year-old. So um, being a mom to a kid, uh, you, how much ever you want to discipline your child, uh, things are always all over the place. I'm a person who lives by the checklist, okay? I've had a checklist since I was seven or eight, that today I'm going to do this, this, this. Okay. So the one of the biggest lessons of my life was nothing will really go according to your checklist all the time. Mm -hmm. The best thing you can do is uh, get as much done as possible, but yeah. never beat yourself up for what you could not do. Yeah. And that's where prioritization steps in. I learned yep. the art of prioritization that these are the things I totally need to do. And mm -hmm. these, if done great brownie points for me, I reward myself with maybe half an hour of Seinfeld or, you yeah. know, uh, a bar of chocolate. But if mm -hmm. not, it's fine. Yeah. So, yeah, that's pretty much it. My schedule is uh, I do start my day with uh, meditation and pranayam and a bit of uh, reading mm -hmm. uh, every day and I close my day with reading and meditation Wow! and everything else between those hours you know it's a, it's a blur okay I don't know <laughs> how it happens it just happens <laughs> and I get things done I don't yeah. know how it happens so yeah I I don't control it anymore I know I need that's to crazy. get things done mm, yeah yeah no that's crazy so like so first of all, like I just had no idea that you are a mom to a five year old because you like you just look young, you know, in its all honesty, you look young and it doesn't feel like that you are a mom to five year old. But apart from the fact that so would you so I have always create a checklist, which is very large, you know, so my theory behind it is if my checklist is large enough, I would be able to get more things done. You know, I mm -hmm. might be wrong, but it works for me. Yeah. So are you a kind of person where you, where you would be like, okay, I would create a short checklist. So at the end of the day, I will take everything off and I'll feel good about it. Or you're like, oh, I'll create as big as I can, obviously with prioritization. Uh, so I can push myself enough. Like wh what are your thoughts on that? How do you go about it? Okay. Uh, okay. So my checklist is mostly uh, the non-negotiables that have to be done. For example, be. that yeah. those are like deliverables for that day. They go on mm -hmm. top priority. Mm -hmm. Everything else, including self-care routines and self-care and self-learning, you know, learning. Yeah. I add a bit of learning every day. That is a non-negotiable. That's that's, so that's those things have to be there on the list. Like you said, the list could be never ending. Yeah. But the fact that I got a few things at least the non-negotiables checked is a big deal for me yeah. and once I get that done many a times I have the time to get a bit more done because mm -hmm. I need that reward I told you about right I yeah, need my yeah. episode of Seinfeld or bar of <laughs> chocolate I need to justify yeah. it with something so I do yeah. that yeah no that's crazy I think that's a great balance I think that's a great balance so uh, in the recent times I've been struggling to actually you know so I have always like so I'm so young that I have that, you know, I, okay, I have to do this, I have to do this, I have to do this. And I'm more of very ignorant in my early uh, career, uh, early years of my career that, uh, you know, meditation might not be that important. You know, I can skip it for a day or two. And now I'm realizing that like, you just have to take out time for that. And then you fill in with whatever you want to do for the rest of your day. Because at, I think, uh, so you are also an advocate of mental health as well. And I believe that in 2021, two and in the world we are moving moving towards it is just getting more chaotic online you know like yeah. so, like there are so many things happening that and you also obviously if you're in marketing you have to be on top of every trend whatever is happening so you have to learn you have to execute you have to track you have to optimize you have to deliver it to your clients you have to live your life you have to have fun as well so i think with all with so many things that you need to take care of mental health becomes more crucial than ever before right yes. so I'm, I always try to kind of nowadays I'm trying to incorporate those, you know, meditation routines, uh, you know, exercise routines, because I think physical fitness is fine. Obviously, it is very beneficial. But I think with so many bombardment of so many thoughts, ideas, different content creators, uh, the content you consume, it is like it is extremely important for you to flex those mental muscles as well. Right. Yes. So I, I think it's important. So what what would you uh, suggest to, you know, young people? who 
think that it might not be very important uh and why should they actually you know take care of mental health what would you kind of some thoughts on that like around mental health what would you like to kind of tell to young people 23 24 25 maybe hmm mental health <laughs> <laughs> it is um, see uh, like we you know use terms like anxiety and depression uh, one of the things is you know we use these terms very loosely and there mm. are people who are actually suffering from this and it has been stigmatized so much that they don't yeah. even want to talk to a therapist one of mm. the first things is that you can take care of your own mental health with a few tools with a few hacks i would say you know to the young people um <laughs> one of them being like we me- mentioned meditation and mindfulness yeah. practicing mindfulness and the second one being journaling mm. the two things are in their own place uh when it comes to meditation i understand it's pretty boring i would say it's boring for young people yeah. they can't sit in one place it's very difficult to do that mm-hmm. uh one of the reasons i started meditating uh more vigor you know in with a rigorous schedule is it helped me out of the long covid brain fog that i suffered post covid mm, this uh, may it was crazy yeah uh it was that bad that you know i would look at the otp on my phone message on one screen which is a four num you know, just four numbers and the next screen when i went and tried to put in the you punch in the it. otp i could not that's i could not i've been through that as well yeah yeah and it was painful for me i always you know with pride i would say the one thing i'm proud of in my life is my mind and all of a sudden my mind was soup mm-hmm. that was the only thing i'm proud of and it's soup mm-hmm. and um it was bad it's not again a happy thing for a marketer uh, it comes back to that you know because you have to continuously uh, take up a lot of content and stuff and go through it now the thing is um uh, with meditation what they say i'm not a, you know i'm i'm not a guru or something but i'm just trying to <laughs> make it a bit easy it it kind of helps you rewire your brain it kind of calms your brain down soothes you in a way that you are just calm you know the kind You're of just, anxiety yeah. the depression and everything that we talk about more than it's gone you are able better able to handle it yeah. like anxiety is fine we need to be anxious so that we can protect ourselves from danger otherwise a person who is never anxious who is not worried about anything mm-hmm. is pretty much gambling on life we don't want yeah. that yeah. right we want inhibitions but we want to balance them out and that is what mm-hmm. this does yeah. and a journal whether it be a gratitude journal is you know we have this thing of feeling victimized with everything that mm. even when we have a lot of work i do it when my calendar is full i crib like why do i have so many meetings yeah. oh my god those meetings mean good business for me yeah. right so it's just a way of looking at it the and a gratitude yeah. do- journal helps me put hey i have so many meetings today this is good business for day you which you know so yeah. the, just changing the perspective a bit yes. looking at things yeah yeah so i think in the i think in the world full of gurus who talk about mental health i think when a normal person from a different segment of the world market talks about it it hits even better you know because it is almost like when you have a abundance of something you just uh, passively ignore it you know and you kind yeah. of look for something so i think Uh, as a society more and more people need to talk about mental health obviously yeah. gurus and you know professionals are doing their thing but sometimes on the internet it can get so much that you passively tend to ignore it because so yeah. when when a lot of people are talking about mental health mental health mental health you passively your brain passively is like okay i have gone through it i've gone through it but if a mm-hmm. person out of the blue for example a, a marketer creating content on youtube talks about mental health it hits you know mm-hmm, because mm-hmm. that person is not about mental health but even if that person is talking about it it obviously people take it more seriously i believe like it yeah yeah and, yeah, yeah. Mm-hmm. so and also like when you talked about you know meditation and how calm it makes you so i realized like so when i sit down for let's say i i i just sit down for meditation so your brain is jumping all over the place you know so there are 50 thoughts after 10 minutes there will be 20 after 10 more minutes there will be five and when you get at a place where there is only one thought in your mind and you can you are continuously focusing on your breath for continuous 10 minutes it is when it hits you how mm-hmm. rejuvenating 
meditation actually is you know and i think majority of the people young people of my age just never are able to get at that place yeah. of solace you know where their mind is free of all the thoughts so they might get at near to it but then after some time they just you know they just get uh yeah. kind of get lose, lose it yeah lose it and mm-hmm. they're like okay no it's not working i, I still have a lot of thoughts in my mind mm-hmm. so i think it is about consistently actually doing it for long enough and i think yeah. if you do it and you and you just get that feeling of blank i would say blank mind not blank i, I don't know what the right word for it is it is it is, it is blank mind yeah blank it's blank what could and, be a better thing you know than a yeah. mind which is free yeah. of anything Yep, it's like on a blackboard. Uh, there is a chalk everywhere. You scribbled it, and then slowly you are dusting it off. Oh yes. And, and at the good end, good analogy. Yeah, good analogy, right? And then at the end, it's just a blackboard. So now, yeah. after the meditation, you can start. You can pick a fresh piece of chalk, and you can start writing the way you want. And I think there is not, there is not a lot of feelings better than that. I would say, uh, if you you know truly kind of practices, which is great, which is great as well. So now moving towards. so we have talked about marketing we have talked about mental health so i just came to know that you have published your own books which is insane which is insane <laughs> just a stories from india right so uh tell me about how that journey has been for you like you know from actually kind of coming with the idea of actually uh writing a book and coming with the idea of actually okay i want to publish a book uh when did that came and uh, tell us a few good stories from your book like and lighten us of uh, so we can actually go and people watching this actually go and purchase the book and read about it thank you so much akshay but it's just one story that i have published in that book so it's an oh, anthology no, of short stories yeah okay. so how it happened was it was i you know it was all a haze again and uh, mindfulness and meditation had a lot to do with this particular story actually mm-hmm. so uh, the story that's a the great that's a great uh, chronology in the podcast we talked about mindfulness and then we were talking about yeah. the book so that's great yeah, yeah. Mm-hmm. so uh, what happened was you know the, it was a very short deadline and um, some a friend of mine reached out to me that hey he just submit a story you have been writing for a really long time why don't you put one of them in print yeah so um I was like, "What do I write?" You know, none of the stories I have till now is, you know, something I would go, give into publishing. Mm-hmm. I want it to be chosen, right? Yeah. So um, I sat to write. I wrote that story in four hours. The only twist was before I wrote the story, I sat in meditation because mm-hmm. I, I am. A, I also practice Reiki, so uh, you know, you kind of uh, I try to give Reiki to myself to. ensure that you know that creative journey what's, is what's what's sorry 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 to interrupt what what's that term i just have never heard of it reiki what did you say reiki what's uh, that R- please explain r e i k i r okay okay r e i k i uh, okay. so it means uh, the life force energy okay. that that energy that flows through all of us that gives us life oh, and okay got it nourishes us okay got so, it so So I practice that it, it, it's a healing art, you know. It's mm-hmm, um, mm-hmm. art, science, whatever. It's kind it. of a nidra yoga. Like, is it some some? Have you heard of nidra yoga, or have no. you not? No. Okay, so that's no. something similar as well. There are a lot of things. Okay. So yeah. Anyways, it's yeah. it's mostly practice with the hands, and you can <laughs> you know heal from a distance also when right. it comes to Reiki. So mm-hmm. it is basically you know giving uh, you know life force energy to the seven chakras that we have in our body. Yeah, that's so same, I was. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Okay. <laughs> okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So I pretty much I did that, and I, uh, you know, I just said, you know, I need some creative energy right now to make this happen, and I wrote that like start to end, including editing it all, was done in just four hours for that particular yeah. story. Yeah. So that was the high point of it, and <laughs> that's insane. It, the story itself, you know, it just I don't know it flowed. Trust me, Akshat. It flowed through my fingers onto the keyboard, and it just <laughs> that's, happened. That's that's and what we call the epitome of flow state. Can we? Could be. Could be. Huh? <laughs> <laughs> could be. And because the story is also a bit like that, you know, it it yeah. kind of has a message in it. Mm-hmm. So yeah, if you would like. Uh, yeah, I think just I will. Uh, okay, yeah. So if you are listening, I will uh, kind of put the link in the description. Maybe it's it's on it's on Amazon. It's on Amazon. Yeah, so yeah. you can. Uh, it's called Jista Stories from India. You can click the link in the description and you can check it out. I'm sure it would be great. I'm sure it would be great. 
Okay, bro. So, uh, I think we are just moving towards the end. So, uh, there is this one segment that I'm introducing just from today, just from this podcast. Starting from this podcast, I've never done it before. So, what I will do is, I there are few tweets from your profile that I would like you to elaborate upon. You know, uh, so these are oh these, these are the. <laughs> So this is going to be interesting. So these are the tweets. Uh, so I read the tweets myself, and I was like, okay, I would like to know more about this tweet. You know, okay, what was mm-hmm. the thought process behind it? So I'll just quickly, you know, kind of read those tweets in front of you, and uh, I will be kind of kind. Talk- no, 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 it's very, very basic. You know, like nothing more. I'm just starting out, so I have not dig deep into it. Uh, so I just put it, put on the tweets uh, from there. Okay. Um. So I think we have already kind of, you know, uh, acknowledged this fact that you said there is little difference between a marketer's mind and Raita. It's all over the place. <laughs> so, we, <laughs> so we have already talked about it. Uh, we have already talked about it, which is great. Uh, okay, so I, I, I kind of was confused about this tweet. Uh, I would like if you would kind of elaborate more upon it, right? So you said people use products to connect with other people or improve the effectiveness with which they connect with other people. If your product's communication isn't hopping on this message, then maybe you should rethink it. So mm-hmm. if you would like to elaborate upon that, that would be great. Okay. Um, so you remember that age to age communication that we yeah, were talking yeah, about yeah, human yeah. to human. Yeah, yeah. So um, at the end of the day, every app, every product, every platform, if you see are either connecting people, think about, you know, maybe zoom right, right mm-hmm. now. Okay. It's helping you connect with a person, Twitter, Instagram, mm. or uh, think of a video editing tool. That video mm. editing tool is helping you edit the video so people can watch this podcast maybe in oh, a okay. better way and help them connect with this mm. podcast in a good way. So at the end of the day, every okay. tool, every app mm. you have on your phone, everything which is digital is in a way trying to connect a human to another human. And yeah. we need to get that message across. Yeah. Mm. So now, now when you say it, it hits me hard that, so uh, you kind of, kind of explained it in, uh, in the terms of digital product software that we use. Right. Mm-hmm. So now I am also thinking about, okay, so obviously the obvious question in my mind was, okay, what were the normal products that we use in a day-to-day life? Right. So I thought about coffee and I was like, okay, why do I drink coffee? So I can be focused and I can connect with person in a more, more concentrated way. So this tweet is very profound, you know, but so <laughs> a normal person would read it and they would be like Twitter rewards, feel good tweets, you know? Okay. Yeah. Everything is going to be all right. You just have to wait for it. And so it will get more likes than this tweet, but it is a very profound tweet. Like any product that you use is either you like to look good, feel good. So someone else want to connect with you or you can connect with them in a better way which is great and now i'm loving it that's why I, that's the reason why i started this segment i'm glad you picked this one. Yeah. <laughs> so that's why that's why i started this segment because sometimes you have thoughts in your mind you just cannot explain it properly on the tw- tw- twitter mm-hmm. and sometimes and people might understand it, understand it in a very different way yes. so that was my reason to actually also who is whoever is editing this put in the segment Twitter dies, or if you have a better name, just let me know, Brahma. So we will kind of put that segment before the segment starts because yeah. I don't edit it. So yeah, Twitter dies, I would say. Yeah, whatever, whatever, whatever <laughs> is coming to my mind right now. Twitter dies. Uh, also, there is one last tweet. Uh, it says, Meeting your goals will mean nothing if your processes are faulty, it just won't sustain. Create iron solid processes through observation and feedback, and then see the difference. So, how do you, uh, so, I understood the tweet, uh, probably everybody who read the tweet understood it. How do you practice it on a day-to-day basis? You know, because since as a marketer, we have a lot of things to do and sometimes we just might forget about, you know, actually working on those solid uh, processes in the basement that we need to create in order to scale whatever we are doing, mm-hmm. right? So how do you make sure that you're al- always and on a day-to-day basis paying attention to actually mm-hmm. working upon slowly iterating upon building those processes? Okay, so so what I do is to build any process, you need to test a lot of things out because one of those things will click and that becomes a part of my process, right? Okay. So till I hit that part that, you know, for example, um, what kind of example do I take? Uh, If I'm building a buyer journey, for example, Okay. okay, and in that journey, I send out emails. Mm-hmm. And I see I'm A-B testing emails. Mm-hmm. 
mm-hmm. one of those emails does really good so basically if the test works mm-hmm. that immediately becomes a part of the process mm-hmm. but i don't just pick up an email and say this is part of the process because i don't know whether it works or not yeah so basically so you're testing, testing it in the market uh, okay yeah you're testing it in the market and yeah. whatever is working you're adding it to your process okay this is working exactly cool exactly and yeah. other things you know a lot of things come from feedback feedback hmm. is something we don't use a lot yeah, we man. don't use it a, a lot as in human beings marketers business owners it is so hmm. underrated but it yeah. is one of the best ways we can actually build full proof stuff yeah. yeah so so when when i think about feedbacks and i think the reason why people tend to ignore feedbacks is because when you ask for a feedback out there in the world there is a possibility of you getting exposed you know and we as human beings are afraid of it you know we are like okay what if someone's told something bad bad to me about it what if mm-hmm. someone told me that i'm doing it wrong we are mm-hmm. always afraid of it and I, th- i think if we just become more accepting of the faults that people tell us we will be more open to feedback as well you know it, bo- it it goes both way both both ways uh which is and i always tell people that if you are trying to grow online creating content whatever you might be trying to do you so people are like if i am creating content i i should grow no no because mm-hmm. there are million people out there who are who are creating content right so you have to sit down with yourself you have to see what's working what's not it it is again where the data part of a marketer comes in data mind of a marketer where you see okay this is working okay this is not let's try this let's uh, do more of it so mm-hmm. people just forget you know that after every week you actually have to sit down if that particular strategy have worked out for you or not yes. because if you are yes. just continue going to continue doing it for one year it is not going to work like how are you mm-hmm. going to and i think optimization is very important like it, it is extremely important so i have this framework where i am like you experiment uh you take a uh, feedback you optimize and then you experiment again yeah it it has mm-hmm. to be a loop and you have to make sure that you are giving enough time to that experimentation because yeah. if you are doing that experiment for two days and then then you do not have enough data to actually make that wise decision okay it is working or is it not so i mm-hmm. i say just give it enough time take feedback and then optimize and then do it again do it again some things Absolutely. will hit in the process right i hope you will agree with the same no no yeah. definitely and, and the thing about feedback even i have had my fair share or it was not easy for me to take feedback mm. okay it was mm. always feel like a criticism but yeah. then um, exactly. one thing i learned is whenever somebody is giving you a feedback there are two ways to looking at it actually there is only one way they are giving a feedback on your work and that feedback is not on you it mm, is not at exactly. the person that they are saying that if they are saying this does not work they are saying mm. this does not work they are not saying you don't you, work you uh, that's that's a great way to think about it people don't like it is yeah. not a direct you know finger on you or your character it's like okay it's a part your work is your part of you right so if it is wrong yeah. there is some you can improve it it's not that you as a person is doing something wrong i failed it yeah have, yeah you just failed in that one experiment you can try it better so yeah. yeah feedback is important again great 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 okay it's been a great great conversation broma to be honest like uh it flew it flowed very naturally and you were afraid about it i i i'm feeling i had that feeling that okay, okay she is not very comfortable she is like oh, actually you have to edit but that's fine you know i always like to so that is that no, was the no, reason it was why it's not that i was okay, so maybe. tired i was okay, like, you were tired i don't I don't okay. know if I can make yeah. any sense. <laughs> so. mm, no, that's uh, yeah, yeah. I I I got that. I got that feeling. That's fine. That's fine. Okay, so uh, I'll just quickly wrap it up with last two questions. So the first question would be to anyone to anyone who is trying to start their career in the world of marketing in 2022, what would be the top five things, tips, skills, whatever it might be, that you would want them to keep in their mind? before they enter that glorified world of marketing that it has become mm-hmm. what are your thoughts on that's the first question second to anyone who is starting out what are the few books that you would recommend it can be self help it can be in terms of mindset or it can be top in terms of marketing that you have read in your career that helped you a lot the last two questions and then we'll wrap it up okay yeah okay so um I just quickly glanced at my bookshelf, you know. <laughs> <laughs> That's fine. You can look at it with confidence. Uh, uh so No, uh, no, the books I've already read are not here, so I'm tr- oh, I okay. have to think. But okay. yeah, so to answer the first question. Um uh, 
to anybody who wants to start off on the path of marketing uh, i would say don't do it just for the sake of it because it's glorified yeah. only if it's a calling you're like crazy passionate about it and it's not just about marketing any field you choose if you're crazy crazy passionate about it then only go for it because uh anything could be extremely difficult but if you love it like a crazy person it. it will feel good whether or yeah. not it's easy or difficult True. the second thing is as a marketer you would really need to understand first and foremost human psychology consumer Absolutely. behavior how people think how people feel Absolutely. you know i am a big proponent of empathetic marketing because hmm. as a marketer you need to empathize you need to yeah. understand what the other person might be feeling or wanting mm. and giving it to them um third thing would be lap up as much content as possible you know before <laughs> even you start churning things out take in as much content use your brains to understand which one is working which one is not yeah not just that try to understand you know uh, what kind of things vibe with a certain kind of audience hmm that's what important kind of con- yeah it's not just looking at the content but who are talking about that content you can learn so much from not just a youtube video but the kind of comments that are going out there hmm. the kind of people who are interacting with that you get to understand the demographics hmm. of the people who might be you know watching this podcast yeah the fourth point would be once you start marketing um it's good to focus on a certain niche like you know i did mention that i'm a generalist and i do everything from pr to email to inbound yeah. content but to start off with it is too much for a marketer to be all over the place so mm. just to uh, you know start with one beat performance yeah. marketing as inbound but whatever you do never forget about the first step of creating a buyer persona understanding your client like you know treat that client as your own you know the brand as your own brand that's one yeah, thing yeah. i say Yeah. Don't look at it like a money making machine. Hmm. Just treat it as your own baby. The kind of marketing that will come out of that is another Isn't level altogether. Another level. Absolutely. Absolutely. That's pretty much I have just four points Akshat. Four so points. Yeah. No, that's, that's great. Th- those are some great points because like uh, in my small career as a marketer i have believed that i am like i i i am always a te- like i have an inclination towards few components of marketing but once i have understood human psychology and behavior i think i can apply those concepts in every form of marketing you know because yeah. like now you so now once you understand the people you're talking to you you know how, what words to use so you know basic copywriting yeah once you yeah. know basic copywriting yeah. you can write b- good emails that will convert once you mm-hmm. understand people you know how to talk to them with what message to talk to them in the ads you know so it is Absolutely. all about actually understanding people once you do that you actually just have to read read some basics of all these concepts email marketing copywriting you'd be good right and people mm-hmm. ask me actually which skill do i learn i was like learn the skill of talking to people and actually understanding them because if you can do that you can apply it in every aspect of marketing like all over the place in content you are creating in mm-hmm. captions you're writing in copies and landing pages and emails and all like everything right mm-hmm. so i think mm-hmm. that i always tell it in proma with her 11 years of experience told it to you again so i think it would be true like if you don't listen to me at least listen to her right so okay those are thanks for those points from i think people would really found find it helpful uh last question book recommendations the books, the books. okay the books uh this is marketing by set gordon oh love it uh yeah <laughs> uh influenced by robert cialdini my favorite and uh Psycho Cybernetics by Maxwell Maltz. These are the okay. three books you totally need to read, and it will be transformative for your entire journey. Okay. And one thing, you know, one entire set of books I have read, which was actually master's course books that I read in psychology. Basically, I did an entire course in psychology without a degree because mm-hmm. I was working with an academic, uh, you know, mm-hmm. publisher. Okay. uh doing some work on those particular books uh by professor feldman so he is a very Lovely. well known person when it comes yeah i read his entire yeah. all the books all the so case studies you won't be, for you, work that's great you won't <laughs> believe it so i am always uh, on hunt of great 
courses that I can take on psychology. You know, so mm-hmm. what, since you told it to me, I would like to connect with you on DMs, and so you can kind of tell me exactly how to read it and what are the books that you read. Before we go and kind of sum up this this podcast, tell people what you what what have been going in your life. What are you doing? Where do you want people to pay attention to? Where they can follow you? Where they can follow your work? And then we'll just sum it up. Okay. So yeah, that's basically, fine, fine. Uh, what I'm doing right now is a lot of things. One being, um, of course, you know, Digibitch is it's it's my baby. It's five years old now, a bit over five years old. It's a marketing agency uh, where I take care yeah. of content marketing, inbound branding for B two B SaaS companies. Uh, I talk a lot about marketing all over Twitter uh, on the Digibitch Instagram handle. and uh, of course linkedin yep. uh, like you mentioned akshat every tweet of mine kind of has his back story on my linkedin so that's where i kind of yeah i write okay, about the entire great. thought process behind the tweet on linkedin apart mm. from that building the digibitch that's marketing lovely. community so if you're an aspiring marketer uh, even akshat is a part of it uh, please join us on discord uh, if we can <laughs> we can maybe share the link uh, yep. to the community And hundred uh, percent. And yeah, if there are a lot of uh, <laughs> teens uh, to introduce practical learning and mentorship for young kids these days that we never had in our days. So that is what Evolve is about. Uh, we are going to launch the app in Feb. Um, writing two books. Don't know when they will be over. One is on Mayan civilization, which is a nonfiction, and the other one is again a nonfiction, which is on how to write good content. So let's see when those come out. That's crazy. That's a lot <laughs> of things. That's just a lot of things. But guys, all the links will be in the description. You can check her out depending upon what type of content do you like to consume. She's on Twitter. She was on. She's on LinkedIn. We are on Discord, Instagram, all over the place. All the links will be in the description. Check her out. I like her content. I like her tweets. That that's the reason why I invited her on the podcast. So you can gain the maximum knowledge and the wisdom out of her career. I hope you found this podcast useful. Thanks a lot, Prama. Thanks a lot for joining in and sharing your wisdom to my community. Thank you so much for having. Absolutely, pleasure is all mine. Pleasure is all mine. Thanks a lot. You have a good day, uh, and we'll stay connected for sure. Sure thing. Yeah. Sure. Yeah. Absolutely. Thank Take you. Take care. Thank you.